Hi guys, this is Jason Williams DO. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel. This channel is intended to help you live your best life. I wanted to talk to you about a change that has happened for me. In the past, and I'm not proud of this, but in the past, there were certain patient types that I would cringe when I would see them on the schedule. These might include chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, etc. If you're in healthcare, you know what I'm talking about. These patients seem like they were hard to help, seem like they had a condition that I couldn't do much for. A lot of these patients had seen multiple doctors and had tried multiple treatments without much success. Part of my issue probably was lack of education, lack of knowledge, lack of confidence in being able to offer the patients something of value. If you're a patient, you need to know that if you have one of these type of diagnoses, this is a challenge for your physician, so give them grace. I remember when I saw patients like this in the emergency department, I was actually relieved that they weren't my patient to follow ongoing. Once again, not proud of this, but I would basically treat and treat. I'm not afraid to see these patients anymore. If you are in healthcare and you have one of these patients, send them to me, I will take them on. I'm not planning to give them narcotic or opioid prescriptions though. Today I wanted to talk about low dose naltrexone as a possible treatment for some of these patients. Naltrexone is a synthetic opioid antagonist. It was invented in the 1960s and was approved by the FDA in the 1980s. Initially it was approved for opioid use disorder and alcohol addiction treatment. Later also approved for weight loss in a combination pill with bupropion. Bupropion is an antidepressant. For opioid use disorder and alcohol addiction, the naltrexone dosage is 50 milligrams a day. For weight loss, the naltrexone dosage starts at eight milligrams a day. The low dose naltrexone dosing begins at 0 0.05 milligrams a day and often goes up to six milligrams a day. For many conditions, 4.5 milligrams per day is the sweet spot and the best effective dose. When I tried to research low dose naltrexone, I noticed there were greater than 900 hits on PubMed, basically 900 articles. This medication has been used for 20 plus years. Prestigious universities such as Stanford and Harvard even specialize in this care. Early on, Dr. Bahari from Harvard treated AIDS patients with low dose naltrexone with great success. Low dose naltrexone is not FDA approved and would be considered an off-label use for the conditions we use it for today. I want to give you a list of many conditions that are treated with low dose naltrexone. Chronic pain disorder, complex regional pain, fibromyalgia, cancer pain, prevention of cancer recurrence, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, ALS, HIV, depression, irritable bowel syndrome, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, Crohn's disease, mast cell activation syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, sarcoidosis, psoriasis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, thyroiditis, and allergies. These conditions are awful and they cause significant decreased quality of life. In prior videos, I've talked about how some of these conditions are more prevalent in the last 50 years, possibly due to diet, stressful lifestyle, toxins, and even genetics. Prevention of these conditions would be great, but if you are diagnosed with this problem, it's already a little late for you. It doesn't mean there's no hope though. There is a treatment that can be helpful. Studies and anecdotal reports and patient testimonials do verify that low-dose naltrexone can be very beneficial. The side effects of low-dose naltrexone are gastrointestinal upset, difficulty sleeping, and even vivid nightmares or dreams and then headaches. Many of the side effects get better within a week. Sometimes the side effects require dosage adjustments. If you have a thyroid disorder and are taking thyroid replacement, low-dose naltrexone decreases autoantibodies, and as a result, your thyroid condition may improve to the degree that you do not need the higher dose of thyroid replacement. If you're taking opioids, you would need to take low-dose naltrexone either four hours before or four hours after the dose. The onset of action of low-dose naltrexone can be between days and months. When you think about opioids and you review, opioids are shown to injure the immune system function. Opioids have been proven to damage intestinal permeability, allowing for leakage of immunoglobulins, 
leakage of substances that can trigger the immune system, even possibly translocation of bacteria in an infection type scenario. Opioids also suppress the immune system and make it difficult to fight off infection. Kind of a double whammy. The clinic I work at does not prescribe opiates for chronic painful conditions. Doctors that do prescribe low-dose naltrexone, such as functional medicine doctors, integrative medicine doctors, and even family doctors, do have an avenue to treat these patients. It is felt that these medications work by directly enhancing immune function. A specific whole like receptor 4 is on immune system cells. This is affected by naltrexone and helps to attenuate the immune response, decreasing the inflammation, decreasing pain sensitivity, improving sleep, and improving cognition. The other fascinating thing about low-dose naltrexone is it binds to the opioid receptors, but only for a few hours. While it is bound, the body itself tries to produce more endorphins because it senses that there's a lack of endorphins circulating. As the body has revved up this endorphin production, then the naltrexone starts to leave the receptor sites opening up an access point for these endorphins to touch the receptors and have their analgesic effect and anti-inflammatory effect. Fascinating type of mechanism of action for an extremely low dose medication. Since I'm talking about the immune system, it's fine to interject that there are a few other supportive treatments that you could use in treating patients with these chronic conditions that seem to be very low risk. These include vitamin D, which decreases cytokine release, Cytokines are chemicals that result in inflammation. Omega-3 fatty acids, which seem to inhibit the cyclooxygenase pathway for inflammation, similar pathway that Celebrex or Cox inhibitors work on. And even probiotics. It is found that bacillus type species probiotics seem to help with T regulatory cells and improving immune function. These three add-ons are very low risk and likely to be helpful for immune system problems some of these conditions that we listed earlier. I have no financial interest in low-dose naltrexone, and in fact, this medication is off patent and is very cheap. You can get it through a compounded pharmacy, and there's not much incentive, probably, to have large-scale pharmaceutical-type trials to test this out. So, of course, we're leaving the evidence zone now, and we are in the realm of discussing anecdotal evidence, patient testimonials, and just harm versus risk. When I look at low-dose naltrexone, I wish I would have known more about it earlier, but I know what I know now. To me, it seems like it's worth trying with patients that have terrible quality of life from some of these chronic health problems. These patients have seen multiple doctors and are suffering. Some are disabled, some have chronic daily pain and inflammation. The studies that I have read show promise. Many people do respond. Not always completely, but many respond and can improve. Medicine moves slowly, and I know that. I think for these people, I'm gonna have to consider it. I will offer it to my patients that are appropriate candidates, tell them how it works, and give it a try. Speaking of that, this video is designed to be supplemental information for my patients. I don't have enough time to cover all of this in the office on most visits. If you are not my patient, however, you need to visit with your own physician to discuss your healthcare needs. This is Jason Williams, DO. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel, trying to help you live your best life.